Robotech is a science fiction franchise that began with an 85-episode anime television series produced by Harmony Gold USA in association with Tatsunoko Production and first released in the United States in 1985. It was adapted from three original and unrelated, though visually similar, Japanese anime television series The Super Dimension Fortress Macross, Super Dimension Cavalry Southern Cross, and Genesis Climber MOSPEADA to make a series suitable for syndication. In the series, robotechnology refers to the scientific advances discovered in an alien starship that crashed on a South Pacific island. With this technology, Earth developed robotic technologies, such as transformable mecha, to fight three successive extraterrestrial invasions. Topic. Name origin Prior to the release of the TV series, the name Robotech was used by model kit manufacturer Rayvale on their Robotech Defenders line in the mid-1980s. The line consisted of mecha model kits imported from Japan and featured in anime titles such as the Super Dimension Fortress Macross 1982, Super Dimension Century Orgus 1983, and Fang of the Sun Dugram 1981. The kits were originally intended to be a marketing tie into a similarly named comic book series by DC Comics, which was cancelled after only two issues. At the same time, Harmony Gold licensed the Macross TV series for direct to video distribution in 1984, but their merchandising plans were compromised by Ray Vale's prior distribution of the Macross kits. In the end, both parties signed a co-licensing agreement and the Robotech name was adopted for the TV syndication of Macross combined with Super Dimension Cavalry Southern Cross 1984 and Genesis Climber MOSPEADA 1983. Topic. Fictional chronology The Robotech chronology, according to Harmony Gold, is illustrated below. Note, asterisked works are now considered secondary continuity. That is, that their events exist in the continuity of Robotech, but don't count when conflicts arise with the primary continuity that comprises the three-part Robotech TV series and 2006's Robotech, The Shadow Chronicles. In 2002, with the publication of the Wildstorm DC comics, Harmony Gold officially decided to retcon the Robotech universe. The following Robotech material is now relegated to the status of secondary continuity. The Sentinels in all its incarnations. Robotech, the movie. Robotech Comics published by Comico, Eternity, Academy, and Antarctic Press. Robotech RPGs published by Palladium Books. Robotech novels written by Jack McKinney, most notably The End of the Circle, while these materials are not precisely retired or removed from the continuity, their events are subject to critical review, and are strictly subordinate to the official events of the 85-episode animated series. Topic. Television and film Topic. The original television series Robotech 1985 is an original story adapted with edited content and revised dialogue from the animation of three different mecha anime series. The Super Dimension Fortress Macross 1982-1983 Super Dimension Cavalry Southern Cross 1984 
Genesis Climber MOSPEADA 1983-1984 Harmony Gold cited reasoning for combining these unrelated series was its decision to market Macross for American weekday syndication television, which required a minimum of 65 episodes at the time, 13 weeks at 5 episodes per week. Macross and the two other series each had fewer episodes than required, since they originally aired in Japan as weekly series. On some television stations, the syndicated run was preceded by the broadcast premiere of Codename, Robotech, a feature-length pilot. This combination resulted in a storyline that spans three generations, as mankind must fight three destructive Robotech wars in succession with various invading forces, each of which is motivated in one way or another by a desire for a powerful energy source called protoculture. While each of the three animated series used for its footage informs its content, the Robotech storyline is distinct and separate from each of them. The first Robotech War the Macross Saga, concerns humanity's discovery of a crashed alien ship and subsequent battle against a race of giant warriors called the Zentraedi, who have been sent to retrieve the ship for reasons unknown. In the course of this chapter, Earth is nearly annihilated, the Zentraedi are defeated, and humans gain knowledge of the energy source called protoculture. Humanity also learns of the Robotech Masters whose galactic empire the Zentraedi protected and patrolled. The second Robotech War the Masters focuses on the arrival in Earth orbit of the Robotech Masters, who have come seeking what turns out to be the sole means in the universe of producing protoculture. Through a combination of mistrust and arrogance, their attempts at retrieving this meet with opposition from the humans and unleash a war that leaves the masters defeated and earth awash in the spores of a plant called the Flower of Life. The source of protoculture and a beacon to the mysterious Invid who scour the galaxy for its presence. The third Robotech War, the New Generation, begins with the arrival on Earth of the Invid, who are lured by the Flower of Life and rapidly conquer the planet. References in the previous two chapters explain to viewers that many of the heroes of the first Robotech War had left Earth to seek out the Robotech Masters on a preemptive mission, and it is this Robotech expeditionary force that sends missions back from across the galaxy to attempt a liberation of their homeworld. The storyline follows one group of freedom fighters as they work their way towards the final battle with the Invid. Topic Robotech, the movie Robotech, the movie, also called Robotech, The Untold Story, is a feature film and was the first new Robotech adventure created after the premiere of the original series. It uses footage from the Megazone 23 Part 1 OVA, original video animation, made for video animated feature, combined with scenes from Southern Cross and additional original animation produced for the film. The original plan for the film was to have it set during the Macross saga, parallel to the SDF-1's return to Earth from Pluto. The film would also have served as a prequel to The Sentinels, as both projects were initially meant to share many characters. Harmony Gold producer Carl Masick worked with the OVA's original creators to make the story and the new ending work. The film had to be changed again after the distributor of the film, Canon Films, saw an incomplete rough cut of the film and were upset by it. They ordered Masek to remove multiple scenes from the film and to add more violence most of the scenes removed were scenes setting up characters and showing female characters interacting. Masek reluctantly did what they ordered, and created a new script and rough edit for the film in less than 24 hours. When the distributors saw Masek act out the new film, they were much more pleased with the new cut. The opening night in Texas received a positive response, but Canon Films pulled out after noting that most attendants were adults. The bulk of the scheduled advertising for the series was targeted to children. 
The film had limited success in Argentina and Belgium. In 2011, A&E Home Video released, as a part of their Robotech, the complete series collection, a 29-minute version of Robotech, the movie containing only footage used from Southern Cross. There was no attempt to remaster the footage. Topic Robotech 2, The Sentinels This aborted American-produced series would have followed the continuing adventures of Rick and Lisa Hunter and the Robotech expedition during the events of the Masters and the New Generation. The feature-length pilot is composed of the first three and only episodes that were produced. The Sentinels featured characters from all three Robotech sagas and introduced the SDF-3 along with an overview of their new mission. The series was planned to have a total of 65 episodes. In Robotech Art 3, The Sentinels, Carl Masick blamed the cancellation of the series on the crash of the yen dollar exchange rate, which caused toy partner Matchbox to withdraw from the project. Harmony Gold lacked the funds to produce the series on its own, and production ceased after only three episodes. Robotech 2, The Sentinels was released on VHS by Palladium Books. In 2011, a remastered version was released on the A&E DVD set, Robotech, the complete original series DVD. This version has opening titles resembling those found on the Robotech remastered DVDs, as well as a new ending with text explaining the fate of the SDF-3. Also, all of the flashback footage used from the Macross Saga has been removed, including the reused footage from the episode Wedding Bells. Topic: <laughs> Robotech: The Shadow Chronicles. In 2002, Tommy Yoon announced development of a new sequel film, which was untitled until 2004 as Robotech – Shadow Force. The storyline overlaps with and continues from the unresolved ending of the original series. The title of the story arc was soon changed to Robotech – The Shadow Chronicles. The first trailers with finished animation were shown at Anime Expo and Comic Con International in 2005. It was not until February 2006, when Kevin McKeever, operations coordinator at Harmony Gold, was able to confirm that the pilot movie had been completed. After a series of delays, Funimation Entertainment was finally announced as the home video, broadcast, and theatrical distributor at the 2006 Comic-Con International in San Diego with the possibility of producing further sequels. Harmony Gold premiered the movie at various film festivals in 2006, and it was first seen by a public audience at Mechacon on August 9, 2006, where it was showcased as a charity screening to help raise funds for the ongoing Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Rita recovery effort. A limited theatrical run followed in January 2007, and the film was released on DVD on February 6, 2007. A two-disc collector's edition was released in November 2007. Topic. Robotech, Love Live Alive First revealed in late 2011 in the final minutes of Carl Masick's Robotech Universe, a documentary on the making of Robotech dedicated to the then-recent passing of Masick, Love Live Alive is an adaptation of the 1985 Genesis climber Mospiata Ova, Love Live Alive, incorporating some brand new animation. The film was released on DVD on July 23, 2013 by Lionsgate Home Entertainment in North America. Topic. Other television and film productions Topic. Robotech Wars This promotional VHS tape created by Matchbox was included with their Robotech Wars playset. 
This video includes two episodes cobbled together from clips of the Macross saga. Titled, To the End of the Universe, and Battle Royale. These episodes contain no new footage, and are not meant to follow any continuity established in the TV series. Topic. Robotech 3, Robotech IV and Robotech V Carl Masick revealed ideas for another proposed series, Robotech, The Odyssey, which would have picked up where the new generation and end of Robotech, The Sentinels left off, and eventually created a circular storyline that would end where the original Robotech began in a giant 260-episode cycle to fill up all the weekdays in a year. According to Masek, the Odyssey would have involved the SDF-3 traveling back into the past to the days before the birth of Zor as well as Scott Bernard's search for the SDF-3. The SDF-3's crew would become citizens of the Robotech Master's homeworld and change time by becoming a part of its history. Ultimately, it would be revealed that Lin Minmay was the mother of Zor, making Minmay the focal point of Robotech. The final episode of the Odyssey would be of Zor dying and his super dimension fortress, the SDF-1, being launched into space, and eventually crash landing on Earth in 1999. The next episode after that would be Booby Trap, episode 1 of the original series which in turn will create an endless loop within the Robotech universe. After the failure of Sentinels, Odyssey never went into development, although some of its ideas were worked into the final Jack McKinney novel The End of the Circle, which wrapped up all of the outstanding plot threads left by the original series and the previous Robotech novels. Fan publication Macross Life interviewed Harmony Gold executive Richard Firth in 1986, where he revealed that Masick had plans through Robotech V, which would give us an episode for each day of the year for a year and a half. He also said that these two installments would have brought the series to 285 episodes. Regarding the plot, Firth mentioned a retired Commodore Hunter, whomever that may be, could very well be speaking at the graduation of the later day cadets or whatever, and they ask him to tell them the story all over again, it comes back to the first episode of the series. Masick himself described a fourth and fifth series envisioned for Robotech in Chris Meadows' Space Station Liberty podcast in 2007. Masek mentioned the original series as the first, the Sentinels as Robotech 2, the Odyssey as Robotech 3, and then two further series detailing the evolution of Zor, bringing the combined series total to approximately 300 episodes. Topic. Robotech 3000 Masek attempted another sequel with the development of Robotech 3000. This all-CGI series would have been set a millennium in the future of the Robotech universe and feature none of the old series characters. In the three-minute trailer, an expedition is sent to check on a non-responsive mining outpost and is attacked by infected Veritech Mecha. The idea was abandoned midway into production after negative reception within the company, negative fan reactions at the Fanimecon anime convention in 2000, and financial difficulties within Netter Digital who was animating the show. The trailer is hosted on the official Robotech website, and was included in the 2007 release of the Robotech, the Shadow Chronicles 2-disc collector's DVD, along with behind-the-scenes motion capture footage. Topic. Robotech, Mars Force In October 2004, veteran animation writer and producer Greg Weissman revealed that he wrote developed an animated spin-off series titled Robotech, Mars Force. 
When asked about the project, Weissman said that he was under a non-disclosure agreement with Harmony Gold and was only allowed to mention that he developed the series. In 2006, Harmony Gold creative director Tommy Yoon elaborated on the project in the Space Station Liberty podcast, saying that Mars Force was a series geared at younger audiences, following the children Robotech Expeditionary Force. A similar plot would later be used for cancelled 2014 spin-off, Robotech Academy. Topic. Robotech UN Public Service Announcement A 60-second public service announcement for the 60th anniversary of the United Nations, featuring Scott Bernard and Ariel, was animated during the production of The Shadow Chronicles. Although it did not use the original voice actors and the dialogue was somewhat out of character, it nonetheless marked the first fully completed Robotech footage in many years. Topic. Robotech, Shadow Rising, cancelled On July 27, 2007, at their Comic-Con International panel, Harmony Gold and Yoon unveiled the second entry of the Shadow Chronicles production, titled Robotech, Shadow Rising and was to be a co-production with Funimation Entertainment. Pre-production reportedly began on February 2007 and a projected release date of sometime in 2009 was originally expected. Production ceased after Harmony Gold terminated their deal with Funimation Entertainment due to creative differences. At Comic Con 2012, Tommy Yoon announced that Love Live Alive would pave the way for Shadow Rising. As of 2015, the Shadow Rising trademark remains abandoned since 2007. Topic: Robotech Academy cancelled. On July 5, 2014, Harmony Gold started a Kickstarter project for Robotech Academy, which Masek had developed before he died. The goal of this project was to raise US$500,000 to produce a new 24-minute pilot episode. The crowdfunding project was to have closed on August 9, 2014. However, on August 2, the project was cancelled with a pledge level of US$194,574, or 39% of its target. Harmony Gold, however, announced that further plans to fund the project were being explored. At the 2014 Long Beach Comic Con, it was announced that the producers at Harmony Gold were in talks with at least one new media network on the prospect of producing the show. As of December 7, 2015, the project remains abandoned. Topic. Unofficial and parody productions In the 1990s, Saishin Shaitmasu, an anime fandubbing group, produced the parodies Robotech 3, not necessarily the Sentinels and Robotech IV, Chiron's Counterattack, using footage from, respectively, Gunbuster and Gundam, Char's Counterattack, continuing the tradition of the original Robotech's adaptation of unrelated anime series into a single continuity. On July 2, 2010, Ecuadorian animator Patricio Pat Mosquera uploaded to YouTube a teaser for Robotech Skull Knights. On August 17, 2010, second teaser revealed Rick Hunter standing in front of an image of the VF4 shown in the final episodes of the original series. Robotech Skull Knights has not been released yet. In July 2013, Patricio Mosquera was included as an animation director in the staff list in the IMDb page of Love Live Alive. On December 31, 2012, Cesar Torturo uploaded to YouTube an Argentinian fan trailer for Robotech Valkyrie Project. On December, 2013 the first episode was uploaded to YouTube, and in January 2014, the second episode was also uploaded. 
The series was cancelled after Harmony Gold issued a cease and desist letter to the producers. The team was, however, hired to do the CGI effects for Robotech Academy. Topic. Proposed live action film On September 7, 2007, The Hollywood Reporter stated that Warner Brothers had acquired the film rights to Robotech and would be producing a live action film with an as yet unknown release date. Toby Maguire is producing the film through his Maguire Entertainment banner and is pursuing the lead role, in what the studio plans to be a tentpole science fiction franchise. Maguire stated, We are very excited to bring Robotech to the big screen. There is a rich mythology that will be a great foundation for a sophisticated, smart and entertaining film. In an interview, Harmony Gold representative Kevin McKeever said that Warner Brothers had approached Harmony Gold about the project, that Harmony Gold would have, I say, in its creative direction, and that it was not expected to affect the production schedule for Shadow Rising. He was unable to confirm any details of budget, casting, expected release date, or storyline, explaining that it was too early in the life of the project for these things to have been decided. In June 2008, it was reported that Lawrence Kasdan had been hired to write the film, with Charles Roven and Akiva Goldsman joining Tobey Maguire as producers. During the Robotech panel at Anime Expo 2008, the involvement of Maguire and Kasdan was confirmed, with Kasdan writing the script for the live-action film. Tommy Yoon also revealed that the film is planned as a reimagining of the original Robotech universe with new updated mecha and character designs and will take place several years in the future, departing from the original cartoon's 2009 setting. As of November 2008, Alfred Goff and Miles Miller, who both worked in Smallville, Spider Man 2, Herbie, Fully Loaded, and The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, are the writers for the film. Roven is currently currently no longer working on the proposed film adaptation of the Robotech animated series, but he wished the remaining producers Goldsman and Maguire, fantastic luck, on the project. The Mania.com website reported on June 23, 2009, that British television writer and novelist Tom Rob Smith, has taken over writing duties, for the proposed film adaptation. Smith wrote for the British soaps Family Affairs and Bad Girls before writing the critically acclaimed crime suspense novel Child 44. Smith will be the fourth writer or writing team to be reportedly attached to the upcoming film's pre production. In early 2013, The Hollywood Reporter announced that Warner Brothers was in talks with commercial director Nick Matthew to direct the film. On July 24, 2013, it was reported that Leonardo DiCaprio had turned down a role in Star Wars, Episode 7 and has shown interest to star as a main character in the upcoming big-screen version of Robotech. DiCaprio is a longtime friend of Tobey Maguire, they co-starred in The Great Gatsby. Maguire will probably participate in the film as another one of the lead actors. While Nick Matthew will direct. On February 4, 2015, Deadline.com reported Johnny Nunori and Mark Canton selected Michael B. Gordon to write the film's script and are looking at Andy Muschietti to direct it. On March 25, 2015, Variety announced that the Robotech franchise had been acquired by Sony Pictures, who views Robotech as a potential film franchise. On April 29, 2015, Deadline reported that James Wan is in talks to direct the film. On June 3, 2015, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Wan is confirmed to direct the film. On July 3, 2015, Kevin McKeever of Harmony Gold announced at Anime Expo that Sony has the rights to release this film worldwide, with the exception of Japan. On March 27, 2016, Wan told IGN that the film will follow the roots of the franchise. 
As of April 4, 2016, Harmony Gold's Kevin McKeever revealed on the official Robotech Facebook page that their deal with Sony is still not finalized. On July 17, 2017, it was reported by The Hollywood Reporter that Argentine filmmaker Andy Muschietti will direct the project, after Juan dropped out to work on Aquaman. On September 12, 2017, Jason Fuchs was reportedly hired by the studio to write the script for the film. Topic. Other media At the time of its broadcast, Harmony Gold also launched Robotech through a popular line of comics to be followed by novels, role-playing games, toys, and other consumer products. With the cancellation of Robotech 2, The Sentinels, many of these licensed products were discontinued, and led to a drought of Robotech product through much of the 1990s, except for publishers who continued the Sentinels storyline in print. Topic. Art books In 1986, Starblaze Graphics published Robotech Art 1, a reference book containing artwork, Japanese production designs, and episode guides from the original television series. This was followed by Robotech Art 2, which was largely a collection of art by various American artists and fans. In 1988, Carl Masick collected much of the unused designs from Robotech 2, The Sentinels into Robotech Art 3, The Sentinels, which also included his story outline for the rest of the unfinished series, with an explanation behind its cancellation. In 2007 Stonebridge Press published The Art of Robotech, The Shadow Chronicles. Topic. Comics Robotech comics were first published in 1984 with DC Comics' short-lived Robotech Defenders and Comico's adaptation of the first episode of the Japanese version of Macross. However, the first adaptation of the Robotech television series did not arrive until 1985 with Comico's Robotech, the Macross Saga No. 2, which continued from the first Macross issue. The various comic publishers include Comico, 1984-1989 Eternity Comics, 1988-1994 Academy Comics, 1994-1996 Antarctic Press, 1997-1998 Wildstorm, D.C., 2002-2005 Dynamite Entertainment, 2013-2015 Titan Comics, 2017 Topic. Collectible card game The first Robotech collectible card game was released in 2006 by Hero Factory, which had previously produced Robotech trading cards. Topic. Music and soundtracks Various Robotech soundtracks have been released on records, cassettes, and compact discs since 1988. Robotech, BGM Collection, Volume. 1, 1988. Robotech, Perfect Collection, 1988. Robotech, Perfect Soundtrack Album, 1996. Robotech, Battlecry Soundtrack, 2002 Robotech, Invasion Soundtrack, 2004 Robotech, 20th Anniversary Soundtrack, 2005 Robotech, The Shadow Chronicles Soundtrack, 2007 Robotech, 30th Anniversary Soundtrack, 2015 Topic. Novelizations 
Since 1987, Robotech was adapted into novel form by Jack McKinney, a pseudonym for the team of James Lucino and the late Brian Daly, a pair of writers who had been working with Masick since they had collaborated on the animated series Galaxy Rangers. Using fictitious epigraphs in the style of Dune, McKinney's novels fleshed out the chronology including adapting the incomplete Sentinel's source material in far greater detail than the original animation. Many Robotech fans consider the McKinney series to be an unofficial canon of its own, despite notable divergences in the writing from Harmony Gold's current official animation-based canon. Despite no longer being considered core continuity by Harmony Gold, the novels have been recently reissued by Del Rey Books as omnibus compilations. Topic: Role-playing games. In 1986, Palladium Books published a role-playing game based on the Robotech series, including several books covering the Sentinels portion of the storyline. The original Robotech RPG line went out of print as of June 30, 2001, but Harmony Gold and Palladium Books signed an agreement in 2007 to produce a new line of Robotech RPG books, beginning with a book covering and promoting the feature-length film The Shadow Chronicles. The Robotech, The Shadow Chronicles role-playing game Sourcebook first book was released on March 21, 2008, followed by Sourcebooks covering the Macross, Masters, and New Generation chapters of Robotech, redrafted to reflect the Harmony Gold canon. Other Sourcebooks and supplements are reflected in the Palladium Books production pipeline. On April 18, 2013, Palladium started a campaign on the crowdfunding site Kickstarter for a tabletop miniatures game based on the Robotech RPG called Robotech RPG Tactics. The miniatures are being produced by Ninja Division, combining sculpting talents from Soda Pop Miniatures and Cypher Studios, and will feature multi part plastic miniatures that can be posed during assembly. The campaign reached its goal in three hours, and was initially scheduled to release in December 2013, but delays have persisted into 2018. In May 2019, under licensing from Harmony Gold and Strange Machine Games, Battlefield Press International produced a game book for the new Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. Topic. Toys. Action figures in the 3.75-inch size of the three Robotech generations were initially released in 1985 by Matchbox Toy Company, but then reissued in 1992 by Harmony Gold. Lunk and Korg were only released by Matchbox and Lin Minmay was only released by Harmony Gold. Each included a weapon and helmet where appropriate. Matchbox also released 6-inch figures of Zentraedi characters from the first generation. These figures were supposed to represent the size difference between the humans and the giant Zentraedi forces, but to be correct these figures would have to have been made about 20 inches tall. None of the larger figures came with weapons but the armored Zentraedi came with a removable helmet. Also many toys depicting the vehicles and mecha from the series were released by Matchbox in 1985, Harmony Gold in 1992 and Playmates Toys in 1994 under the ExoSquad line. There were major differences in packaging, toy stickers and colors between the different releases. The vehicles were designed to be used only with the 3 and 3 quarters inch figures. The SDF-1 playset was only released under the Matchbox line in the 1980s and could be used with both the 3 and 3 quarters and 6 inch figures. Harmony Gold and Matchbox were unable to sell the 155th VF-1 Valkyrie toy originally sold in Japan by Takadoku Toys due to Hasbro licensing it as Jetfire in the Transformers toy line. 
Because of this, they settled with manufacturing a non-transformable Veritech fighter that could fit any of the 3 and 3 quarters inch action figures, as well as importing the transformable super-deformed Veritech fighters originally manufactured in Japan by Bandai as Macross VF-1 Valkyrie joke machines. Since the late 1990s, there has been a resurgence of Robotech-related toys. In 2001, Toynami released the Robotech Masterpiece Collection line, featuring replicas of the Veritech fighters of the Macross saga. Since then, Toynami has become the exclusive toy manufacturer of the Robotech franchise. Having covered Mecha from the Macross saga, the New Generation and the Shadow Chronicles. Topic. Video games Robotech spawned five video game licenses, of which the most recent three were released. Robotech, Crystal Dreams was a cancelled release for the Nintendo 64 game system. This was aborted when its publisher, Gametech, went under in 1998. The game would have taken place during the period between the SDF-1's destruction and the launch of the SDF-3. The game had a Zentraedi invasion during what was scripted in the series as a period of peace. Robotech, Battlecry, 2002, for the Microsoft Xbox, Sony PlayStation 2, and Nintendo Nintendo GameCube. The gameplay takes place in the Macross era, and features a storyline running exactly concurrent with that era's historical events. Multiplayer support is limited to one-on-one. -on -one. Several of the voice actors from the original series, including Tony Oliver, Melanie McQueen, Dan Warren, and Cam Clark, reprised their original roles, or voiced new characters in this game. The game was a relative success, even though many fans complained of the over-cartoonified look of the game. Robotech, The Macross Saga, 2002, for the Game Boy Advance, a side-scrolling shooter that resembles the Japanese Super Famicom game Macross, Scrambled Valkyrie. Robotech, Invasion, 2004, for the Microsoft Xbox and the Sony PlayStation 2. First, third-person shooter. The gameplay covers the new generation part of the story, with support for single-player missions and multiplayer online matches. Features cyclones, transformable body armor, motorcycles. As with Battlecry, several of the original voice actors reprised their roles. Unlike Battlecry, it is not backwards compatible with the Xbox 360. Robotech, The New Generation, 2007, for mobile phones. A top-down scrolling shooter that covers the new generation part of the story, leading up to the Shadow Chronicles. The player can play as one of three characters, Scott, Rook and Rand, each with their own special weapons. The player also has the ability to change into Battleoid mode through the collection of protoculture. Robotech, the new generation features famous music from the TV series, as well as the most evil of all the villains. Topic. Reception of adaptation Robotech is often a polarizing subject amongst anime fans. Some critics look down upon the show for its extensive edits to the source material, westernizing character names, editing for content and chiefly, forging a connection between previously unrelated series, while supporters of the adaptation have pointed out that the weaving of three unrelated series into a contiguous whole necessarily required reworking, and that it helped to maintain a slow but continuous rise in the consumption of anime in the U.S. Series writer, actor Greg Gregory Snegoff said in an interview on the now-defunct Shadow Chronicles news fansite that, Afterward, we received compliments from the Japanese who thought our dialogue and stories were better than the original. Likely a reference to the creators of the latter two series, both of whom worked with the team on the Sentinels. 
The producers of Megazone 23 Part 1 were very happy with the original plans for Robotech, the movie, where the incomplete film would have been added to the Robotech mythos to play part in the Sentinels' storyline, and worked closely with Carl Masick to plan the new ending and animation. When the film reached a limited release, the new ending was released on a Laserdisc of Megazone 23, with the title, Present for You. However, Animag Magazine issue 11 and Animerica Magazine issue 9, volume 4 reports that the staff of Macross at Studio New and Artland, such as the original story creator and mecha designer Shoji Kawamori and chief director Noboru Ishiguro, expressed their concern over the Robotech adaptation and surprise at its differences. In 2009, IGN ranked Robotech as the 34th greatest animated show of all time in their top 100 list. Topic. Distribution Following the original broadcast, the series enjoyed popularity on home video in VHS and DVD formats from the following distributors. For more information, see Robotech TV series, Home Video Release Family Home Entertainment, VHS, Laserdisc. First six tape run of the Macross saga was heavily edited, with roughly 38 minutes of footage cut from each six episode tape. The episode, Private Time, was almost entirely removed, with only a few minutes of the beginning and end being shown. Palladium Books VHS Streamline Pictures VHS Laserdisc ADV Films DVD Region 1 North America Original Broadcast Version and First Printing of the Remastered Version A&E Networks Home Entertainment DVD Region 1 North America Manga Entertainment DVD Region 2 UK First Print of the Remastered Version Madman Entertainment DVD Region 4 Australia Australia, Funimation Entertainment, DVD Region 1 USA, Robotech, The Shadow Chronicles, first print, later re-released by A&E Entertainment. Revelation Films, DVD Region 2 UK, Robotech, The Shadow Chronicles and Love Live Alive, Go Entertainment, DVD Region 2 UK, Region 2 version of A&E's box set, Beyond Home Entertainment, DVD Region 4 Australia, Region 4 version of A&E's box set, Guangdong Qianhe Audio and Video, DVD Region 6 China, Robotech, The Shadow Chronicles, 